So continuing with the same vein of thought, which is return of the West, we have we have India invited to join G7 Health Minister Summit, really important. Then we have this with Indrani Bakchi, Act West, Think East. India is seal sealing relationship with US, UK, Europe after the double reality check from China. Almost unnoticed in the ferocity of the second COVID surge battering us, India's foreign policy pivoted westwards, embracing partners and relationships that, if taken as at the flood, could have interesting implications for India's future. In the past month, India took two big steps, crafting a post-Brexit relationship with the UK and putting its shoulder to the wheel of the Indian-Europe or Europe relationship. For both, improved trade is the better. He says, India is already a robust democracy and a market economy. India can leverage a lot of its strengths, technology advances, a Western-oriented pool of 21st century talent, a climate change believer. These are the two important, all three important things. So, when Sanjay Barua writes, standing less tall, despite best intentions of an act East policy, India's standing and image in Southeast Asia have suffered. Let me just put this to right. I think that our, our reputation is also just like the United States is up on the upswing. Now with the uh, Maitri, COVID vaccine Maitri up and running again from next quarter. And I know there's a huge shortage of uh, vaccines that have not been uh, filled by, by China. We are back in play, and especially after AUKUS, the, the Southeast Asia knows that US is committed, so on the back of that, India is back in play, folks. So not to worry, that was not important, RCEP is not important, and I guess at some point of time we'll have to get over this majoritarianism because that's hurting our foreign policy. So folks, the day has arrived, the Prime Minister has landed in the United States in Washington DC, is what I thought, or New York, going headed to Washington DC for these meetings, uh, I think on Friday with uh, Vice President uh, Harris and then Biden, and why? Why Modi's visit? to the U.S. matters. It's written by Harshpat. He says, signing this deal soon after withdrawing military forces from Afghanistan is a way for the U.S. to reassure its allies and partners that it will now focus on the Indo-Pacific and in so doing, it is now willing to empower its regional allies. Sharing sensitive technology such as nuclear-powered submarine technology is the beginning of a long process in the age of heightened contestation in strategic technologies. The U.S. is showing that it is willing to walk the talk and both Washington and Canberra are willing to bear costs that come with making such decisions. This is about the AUKUS, right? But what is Tanvi Madan, right? He says, the perfect coalition for America. The Quad fits the Biden administration's inclination towards flexible multilateralism is consistent with the U.S. president's desire to see democracies deliver and provide a solution to China problem. What does she write? She writes, the coalition fits the president's thing with China problem. Then he says, Moreover, like the Trump administration, Biden officials envisioned a significant role for non-ally India in their strategy for the region. And the Quad provided a way to work with India beyond pla uh, uh, bilateral platform. And make no mistakes, for the Biden administration, this challenge is significantly about China, even if they don't say it, right? Well, necessary because the challenges ch uh, China has generated in the Indo-Pacific are accurate and are acute and cannot be tackled alone. And possibly because Beijing's assertiveness particularly vis-a-vis -vis the Quad members themselves, has created the market for collaboration between these like-minded states who share concerns about Beijing, especially Japan, Australia, and, the Un and, and India. Right? The four navies and their special forces are indeed in the middle of conducting a military exercise, but it will also include combating COVID and climate change, enhancing regional security, and fueling innovation. That's the critical part. Given the month he's had with the fallout from Afghanistan withdrawal and the AUKUS rollout, President Biden will also want to emphasize America's resilience and that reports of its decline are greatly exaggerated. And his Quad partners have traveled from afar to convey their belief. This is the important message, folks, or at least their hope that that is indeed the case. And when you hear this, right, your hackles rise up. Chinese hack on media and government says a report and that's why India needs the United States. So it's a two-way street, folks. Cheers. So continuing on the theme that West is back, America is back, most uh, important uh, meeting that's happening now is what Chidanand Rajghatta writes. Biden's aside, Modi to meet Kamala Harris. He writes, with a trimmed beard and ever-expanding global agenda, PM Narendra Modi flew into DC on Wednesday for bilateral talks and multilateral exchanges that are expected to define and redefine the contours of New Delhi's foreign relations for years to come. Modi arrives in the United States capital at a turbulent time in world politics. Exactly two years to the day of Howdy Modi. Then we talk about AUKUS powers up 
Five Eyes anti-China plan boosts the quad. That's the reality. And what he says why India was not invited is true. Why is India not part of the deal? Because New Delhi, unlike Australia, is not military de militarily dependent on the US and has a strong defense relationship with Russia. And in both cases, it's a lose-lose proposition as far as I'm concerned. As you stay with Russia and try and pretend that you're not dependent on the United States and you're not making anything yourself, right? And the storm in the in the Pacific Ocean seems to have died down after fence mending. Biden, Macron called French envoy to return to the United States. And more importantly, the EU and Australia FTA is on track. Then what do you have? Iran and India send a common Afghan message. Chai foreign interference make case for an inclusive government in Kabul, Pakistan and China. Beware. India-led UNSC committee nixes Chinese proposal to grant 180-day travel exemption to Taliban leaders. Sure and sure. And guess what Erdogan did and brought up Kashmir. And guess what did Jay Shankar do? Respect UN resolutions on Cyprus, says Jay Shankar. Pay them back on the same coin, folks. Biden doubles US global donations of COVID vaccine shots to 1 billion doses. What's important now is India can partner because our production capacities have finally picked up thanks to opening up supply chains from the United States. Pakistan PM warns of a civil war in Afghanistan. Hey, what happened? Didn't you know about this earlier? Pakistan PM EM Imran Khan has called on the Taliban to form an inclusive government and warned that the failure to do so could see the country descend into civil war. Welcome. Already, the third or fourth attack on the Taliban, which killed a lot of Taliban yesterday too. Right? Taliban seeks Afghan's UN seat. World says no, not yet. Absolutely, India had a huge role to play here. But while Pakistan is missing the plot, scraping the barrel as far as money is concerned, eyeing a deal by December, India and UAE to start FTA talks today. Brilliant because that ties us in with, with, with Israel. He says, aggressive plan for 115 billion India UAE trade in five years is Piyush Goyal. Who could have thought, folks? Bring in Israel, bring in Saudi Arabia, you're rocking, right? And then in Africa, this should tie up. The story of Indian diplomacy in Africa, says by Manjuri Chatterjee Miller, says, within its historical, political, economic, and people to people ties, India is welcomed by African countries in a way that China is not. There is not a whiff, for example, of the acquisitions of new imperialism aimed at Chinese companies, but Delhi needs to do a lot more. So in Africa, to conclude, she writes, thus India's vaccine diplomacy could have paid off, although China has also been offering its vaccines to African nations. There are serious doubts about their efficacy. A thoughtfully full-planned vaccine strategy that prioritized Indians at home and then turned its attentions to other countries would have re reaped immense results and delivered a hugely successful foreign policy outcome. Now, it didn't happen. We are ramped up again. Shortages in Africa and Southeast Asia continue to exist. So we are back in play, folks. Derai Durushtai. Cheers. So, folks, West is back. Its demise is over, overstated. A lot of the a lot of the stuff that comes out is of the left liberals in the United States anyway, right? Whether it's these artists, whether it's these actors, TV comedians, and all that stuff, right? However, as Narayan Batra writes, bad news for Beijing. America comes roaring back. President Biden has picked up the gauntlet China threw down. With Joe Biden in the with Joe Biden in the White House, the narrative of America's decline has suddenly come to an end. It sure does, it, despite what happened in Afghanistan, even though this was an article written much before it. Not only the virus, he's ready to meet any threat on the horizon. For John F. Kennedy, it was the Soviet Union, the Cuban Missile Crisis, the race to the moon. For Biden, it's China, which, however, is much stronger than the Soviet Union and has opened multiple new aggressive fronts, including cyber attacks, technolog technological poaching, intellectual property theft, and unfair trade practices. Hence, the U.S. knows, Biden knows, can't go alone. There India comes into play. The executive order identified API, critical minerals, semiconductors and large capacity batteries for electric vehicles for an immediate 100 day review, followed by a more in-depth one year scrutiny of a broader set of US supply chains, including six key sectors such as defense, IT and energy. India can become a partner. Not since FTR has any US president ever attempted to carry out such a bold plan to rejuvenate America. This is the portrait of a nation on the rise and not in decline. China will know it soon. I am sure the rest of the world will too. The political construct of a post-American world was a figment of academic imagination unrelated to ground realities. It posited that an as other nations such as China rise, America would stand still. But what it forgot is America just has to do the slow walk. 
China's run is slowing down, sprint is slowing down, and China actually needs to be able to sprint to beat America's war. And America is not standing still. This is what everybody got wrong. And, Amer and India continues to do its bit without naming, naming China. PM lists maritime security solutions. We need a framework for mutual understanding and cooperation in order to conserve and utilize our shared maritime heritage. It requires a joint effort by us all. And that was what was important. What did India do about this? Is this how India put together first standalone UNSC session on maritime security? At least two previous attempts had been had, had been uh, blocked by China in the lexicon. Why? Because in lexicon of 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 of, of uh, uh, global politics, maritime security actually means uh, nailing China. India was determined to make an impression in its month in the helm of at the helm of the UNSC and use its considerable diplomatic heft to put together the first standalone session on maritime security, which sent which went beyond piracy and crime. However, since almost all the speakers dwelt at length on the issue of territorial sovereignty and the importance of UNCLOS, it wouldn't have pleased the Chinese at all, folks. Therein lies India's continued take on China, folks. Cheers. So in a bid to pacify and bring the US back, one of the most, one of the most important trips taken was forward by uh, the US Vice President Kamala Harris, coercion, intimidation, Harris rebukes China over incursions in South China Sea. This is something that she had this uh, beta presentation in, in, uh, in um, Singapore. But this is the most important part. This China wrecked nations with virus must seek 10 trillion reparations, says Trump. Trump, former US Trump, returned to the national center stage on Saturday night with this first strong political address. This was, I mean, some Saturdays ago, but Trump also doubled down on his demand for reparation, uh, reparation from Beijing for triggering the pandemic, saying all nations should work together to present China a bill for a minimum of 10 trillion to compensate for the damages they've caused. That's a very low number, he says. The damage is far, far greater than, than that. As a first step, all countries should collectively cancel any debt they owe to China as a down payment on reparations. The nations of the world should no longer owe money to China, but China should owe money to the nations of the world. These nations have been destroyed subsidies. And this kind of pressure is going to build on Trump. What do you have that? GOP led is going this kind of pressure is going to be built on Biden to take uh, China to account, make China pay for it. GOP led House reports report indicts China for Wuhan lab leak. Says ample evidence of virus escaping in late 2019. Virus flares in Wuhan as Delta challenges China defenses, right? You have this. China obviously accuses US to hyping theory virus escape from lab and calls it conspiracy and then tries to divert attention and suggest that it came out from the US army base, right? Blinken supports virus origin probe. This is what was not expected from uh, by China, but it happens. But China hits out at Blinken's meet with Dalai Lama. This was in India. COVID origin probe. The Lancet does U-turn over lab leak theory. If you remember, Lancet had jumped in even without any research to suggest that it were, cannot be a lab leak. And, it, and one realized that the, uh, the, the head of the co Lancet was compromised because it was get, getting money from the same lab, right? Important part to note, right? And like the compromise so many global organizations then u.s cites pressure from china warns investors on hong kong and i am going to suggest that investors in india into hong kong and china also should watch out contagion fear grips global markets over china's debt crisis this is going to get worse 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 folks this is just the tip of the iceberg china jails canadian in case tied to who are we so the problem between canada and the united states and and China continue on this issue. Report links China firm to military. Surveillance products make uh, Hikvision disputes US claims and research find. Now Hikvision is gets most of its sales from the United States and other countries and they're, being, they're going to get nailed and banned. But Biden revokes Biden uh, uh, to bid to ban TikTok WeChat and, and I see TikTok in India too. We really, we really need to double down on that. Beijing hacked MS exchange says US and allies and this is important. Because this hurts India too. And this is where I need to warn Indians, right? Indians lap up China-focused mutual funds. I must tell the Indian government, one of the things that compromised the United States and its policy towards China were these big banks which were investing in, in China. We cannot allow the same thing happening in India. If Indians start, big Indian investors start investing in China, they will act as a major 
uh, uh, block towards any tough policy towards China, folks. And India money will lose its money. Um, China is not sacrosanctly clean, nor does it have laws that really apply to the rest of the world. We also don't have that many, but China is just worse. If it says, like you see, uh, what it did with, 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 the, with the education firms, with the online education firm, boom, bang, gone. 40% destroyed. That's what the problem is, that there is no clarity, there's no transparency in China, folks. You've got to be very careful when you invest there, and the government of India, the government of India must take note of that, and TikTok. Jai Hind.